Hey, hello. I'm Naomi Bambushi. I'm 15 from Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm a 100 Youth Ambassador. I'm with Clary Vangoli, the Executive Director of Global Oneness Project. Yes, hi. My name is Clary Von Lee. Um, I'm the Executive Director of the Global Oneness Project, and I live in Northern California, um, a little bit north of San Francisco. So I've, I've worked at the Global Oneness Project for over a decade, and the Global Oneness Project basically is a nonprofit organization that is at the kind of the, the bridge of storytelling and education, and we host short documentary films, photo essays, and essays, and we also provide companion curriculum. All of that really dives into our common humanity and how we can look at social, cultural, and environmental issues and provide ways to have meaningful conversations in the classroom. Thank you for joining, Clary. I'm so excited to jump into this interview and find out more about you and your work. Are you ready to get right into it? Yes. So let's start with the basics. Oh. Okay. Who are you and how are you making life better for us students? Oh, well, I like to think of myself as a creative person and I like to think about how we can think about our collective, as our collective world. I like to make bridges between stories and ways that we can think about global issues, but also think about how those global issues might also reflect ourselves, our personal lives, but also how we live as human beings. So by asking kind of meaningful questions. Uh, I always try to think about asking meaningful questions that can really inspire students to think about who they are, who they wanna be, what they might wanna do in their lives and hope that that has a impact on students' lives. That's really cool. <laughs> so why do you do what do you do? I've always been a, a person who loves stories. I love witnessing how one single story can actually change someone's perspective. And it could be on a number of issues um, or it could be highlighting a particular person. But I think witnessing how a story can um, change a person's perspective is a powerful moment because in that moment, a person can maybe rethink a stereotype they may have or may think a, a pre-idea, an idea that they thought was true or was fixed in their minds but has, has shifted. That's one of the things I think I do what I do is to think about changing in perspectives, which should be done, I think, across your whole life. Oh, thank you for sharing. Now on to my favorite part, a fun question. What was your dream job as a kid? I probably had two dream jobs. And one of them actually was to be a teacher. And that was because I remember as a child kind of sitting in the classroom and watching teachers draw on the board. For some reason, I was really um enamored with that act of kind of seeing words come to life seeing ideas come to life being able to share them in a way that's alive in the classroom um so that was one and then the other was a librarian just because i was so in love with reading and walking down you know the library and seeing all of these stacks of books all of that knowledge that is just waiting to be um, consumed. So those were two. Would you rather be known for your authenticity or for your generosity? I would probably say my authenticity. And the reason why is at the beginning of COVID, for example, um, 
our organization had to kind of shift and figure out what we wanted to do to be able to kind of reach our educator network in a variety of ways. And we decided to host a series of webinars online and to do that with our storytellers. So these were filmmakers, photographers, writers, educators. Um, and, you know, those were very vulnerable moments, I think, for many people, because a lot of people weren't quite sure what the next steps were. We were all very um, unsure what was happening in the world, what was happening day to day. And so I, every month um, I would interview one of our storytellers and, or filmmakers and um, we kind of go back to some of these stories that these films that we've told over the years um, all of which are still alive, but I remember feeling really vulnerable. And at times, many of the times I had tears in my eyes or I started to cry and I thought, wow, I probably wouldn't have done that before. Um, I don't know. It was just, I just felt very open and I wasn't uh, afraid of being open anymore. I felt like it was, it was a time that we should be embracing that. Um, and it was quite beautiful to see all these people reach out to me to share that they were so, um, touched by that. It just really touched me that, that, that sometimes when we're open, that we can give people permission to do the same. Wow. That's awesome, Claire. I really appreciate you playing along. Now, moving into the <laughs> Christmas question section, what quote or phrase has really stayed with you? One that I've shared a lot with a lot of um, my presentations is a quote by uh, fiction writer Madeline LaIngle, who says that stories make us more alive, more human, more courageous, and more loving. A person who has a career and life I admire is? To be honest, the first people that come to mind are my children who are 16 and 18, so around your age. And I feel that because of their adaptability and their um, strength to recognize what's not just needed for the present moment, but what's needed for the future. Um, it's so I really admire that in both of them. Now, I'm curious about the work you do at Global Wellness Project. I really like how you empower young people through different means, and I would like to find out more. What's the most exciting thing you're currently working on? Well, I think the most exciting thing I'm working on right now is we just released a student photo gallery so over the last year, we've conducted these student photo contests and um, the contests were created to encourage students to kind of take their cameras out in the world, even just outside their homes or even inside their homes to document parts of their lives. Um, we've done this three times over the course of the year, last year and a half, everything from documenting artifacts in their homes to kind of tell the stories of artifacts and also stories of the living world and, and documenting um, students' relationship to uh, the living world. And so we created a, a student gallery highlighting all of that student work. So that is enabling um, teachers and students to meaningfully analyze and discuss these questions in a very thoughtful, deliberate way, kind of by one-on-one -on -one conversations. I'm really excited about this because one, these are works of art. So it's, it's exciting to see student work kind of being used in that way. But then again, you know, photography is a great medium to then break down assumptions and barriers um, because we all see different things. It's a very subjective medium. So we all um, bring our own stories to that conversation too. So I'm excited to see 
where that goes in classrooms and in conversations as, as we go forward. So thank you for having this conversation, Clary. It was such a pleasure to sit down with you and learn about everything you do about your innovations. Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. Such a pleasure to meet you. Thank you.